All right, guys. Well, as you can tell, I don't know if you can tell, but it's dark out here. I couldn't really sleep last night very good. Uh, that happens to me sometimes. I'm a bit of an insomniac. Um, but I thought I'll make a video about uh, my box design. This is a sixth order blow through that's going to go in the back of this Toyota Tundra. And so I thought let me put together a video of how I designed this box uh, to go in this truck. Now, for those of you that don't know, a sixth order, when somebody says a sixth order, what they're talking about is a box. It's basically a ported box inside of another ported box. So it's like a series tuned sixth order. <laughs> Right, so a series tuned uh, sixth order band pass. Basically, you have a ported box in the back that is feeding into another ported box. So you have a rear chamber that has a tuning and a front chamber that has a tuning. Now, if you guys have ever tried to research this topic, you will find that the information out there is all over the place. Some guys say use a box designing program like WinSD. Other guys say don't do that because it won't give you accurate information. Other guys say that the ratio is important, the ratio between the front chamber and the back chamber. Other guys will say that that doesn't matter at all. Uh, people will say that your port tunings are the most important things. Other guys will say that doesn't matter at all. And trying to find consistent information on how to design one of these things, other than, well, it's just magic, uh, can be pretty frustrating, right? Like, I know there are several builders out there, I'm not going to name any names, that design these things. And a lot of guys go to them and pay for a design and then they build their box from that. That's great. You know, I'm, those guys apparently know what they're doing. But I'm convinced there has to be some rules of thumb that we can go by. Right, like for instance, in a ported box, and if you don't know much about this, I'm sorry, but in a ported box, we know that if you make a port longer, it's going to tune the box lower every time. And we know that if with a given port link, you make the port bigger, you're going to tune it higher, right? It, every time, if you have a port that is a foot long and you close it in by making the port area smaller, you're tuning it lower. If you make a sealed box bigger, the resonant frequency goes down. If you make a sealed box smaller, the resonant frequency goes up. Um, so on and so forth. You know, if you make a box smaller, you're effectively strengthening the suspension of your subwoofer. If you make a box bigger, you're essentially weakening the suspension of your subwoofer, right? Because the air pressure acts as a as a suspension as well. So what am I getting at here? What I'm saying is the way a driver is going to react in a given enclosure is predictable to a point. And so there are, what you find online is there are guys are saying there are no rules of thumb that these things are on a case by case basis. Uh, it's basically magic, right? You have to be a wizard to be able to figure out how these things work. And I just don't think that's true, right? Like we can predict how this is going to go. So anyway, kind of get off my soapbox here. 
With all that being said, maybe you do have to be a wizard to design one of these things. I've never actually built one. This is my first time trying this, but I feel pretty confident that I know what I'm doing, at least to a point that I'm going to be able to pull this off. Now, I want to direct you guys to a video that I did find that does a really good job of just giving you some ideas to give you a starting point. Now, this page is called Car Audio Lab. Um, it looks like a pretty re relatively new page, but go check out this guy's channel um, because he's got a lot of good information on there. But anyway, he's got a video on here that basically goes through like rules of thumb or different things and parameters to pay attention to when trying to design a sixth order. It's a really great video. All right, so I didn't use a program or any kind of box design software. I just did it the old fashioned way, all right? I used pen and paper. Um, I had several sketches, several ideas, um, you know, went back to the drawing board a couple of different times. And so I'm just gonna take you guys through what I finally ended up with. Now you can see I've used Canva to kind of draw over what my final sketch was and we'll just kind of go through it piece by piece. So if you're looking at this picture, it's basically a bird's eye view, right? Like you're looking at it from the top. And so you can see this here is the front uh, of the box. This will be the blow through area, the front port that is feeding into the cab. And so then that means that this end right here, uh, of course, is going to be the back of the box. And so in order to fit three 18s with a port at the back, I decided to go with uh, an angled baffle, right? Or kind of angled um, from the passenger side corner, angling towards the driver's side corner with the three 18s oriented in this manner where when you look into the front port opening from behind the back seat, you're gonna see those um, uh, those port, uh, excuse me, those um, magnets, those subwoofer magnets, sorry, lost for words there. Okay, so then you can see this remaining space here is gonna be to mount my port. Now it's a 10 inch aeroport from big ass ports. Uh, again, it was pretty difficult to orient all this to get it to fit, uh, but this is the layout that um, that I think is going to work. So, quick on air spaces, guys. The back chamber or the ported chamber in the rear with the 10-inch aeroport is going to be somewhere in the ballpark of like 17 to 18 cubic feet. And the front chamber is going to be somewhere in the ballpark of about 22 cubic feet. So not quite a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, but pretty close. All right, so just a real quick one rundown, guys. Um, I got a lot of the information about designing this box from that video that I showed you guys, and I will link that video in the description. So if you want to go watch it, you can. But basically, I just took, these are the Sundown X V2 subs. I just went onto the Sundown website and looked at what is the required airspace for these things. Well, it says seven cubes per sub in a ported box. Like, that's huge. That would be 21 cubic feet for three of them. Well, when you're de designing a sixth order, you do want the rear chamber to be a little bit smaller than just how it would be in a bigger, in just a normal like uh, ported box. Uh, I think that's for cone control. So we're going about six cubes per sub with 18 cubic feet. And then that's actually gonna get a little bit smaller once you add the port too, cause that port's gonna take up some airspace. So we're trying to build something that will hit those low notes, them low lows, right? Like we're trying to hit the brown node here. I want to be doing hair tricks. I want to be flexing these doors. And so 
That's the goal. And so a lot of that comes into the rear port. Now we're at about, with that 10 inch arrow port, about five square inches per cube, give or take. And it's gonna end up being about 29 inches long, I think. Uh, the goal is to tune it around 18 hertz, right? I wanna be able to play down to 20 and maybe even into the teens. And again, you have to tune low to be able to do that. I'm not convinced otherwise because uh, any ported box cannot play significantly below port tuning without losing cone control. And so if you wanna play low, you gotta tune low. I don't know, prove me wrong. Somebody in the comments come and correct me if I'm wrong about that. Like I said, I'm no expert, but I just don't understand how you can't. So anyway, rear port's gonna be tuned to about 18 hertz that with that 10 inch arrow port. Front port is going to be huge. It's going to be about 40 inches wide and about 13 inches tall. Uh, and it's going to be tuned somewhere between 45 and 50 hertz. And the main reason for that, that I made it so huge, is just so I can shrink it if I need to. You know, if I go doing some testing and I decide I want to shrink it and tune it a little bit lower and give myself a little bit smaller port area, I can do that. It's a lot easier to shrink a big port than it is to make a small port bigger, right? Once it's too small, you're kind of done. You can't really make it bigger than that unless you want to tear your box apart. So anyway, that's the ports, you know, 18 hertz in the rear, somewhere around 46, 47 hertz in the front. Excuse me. One little quick note about that. Everybody, a lot of the comments I see and a lot of the commentary I see on six orders that you want about an octave in between the two. So for 18 hertz in the back, that would be 36 hertz in the front. But I also know that the front chamber or the front port also sort of acts as like a low pass filter. There's actually a cutoff, a sloped cutoff after you start playing above your front port tuning. And 36 is pretty low. So I, I want to be, be able to play a little bit higher than that. So anyway, we're in the 40s somewhere. 45 hertz, something like that. That's what the front port's going to be tuned to. And then I can adjust it if I need to. So that's what this box is going to be, guys. Unless some drastic changes happen midway through the build process. But I don't think it's going to, right? We've got that angled baffle with the 318s. Um almost a one-to-one -one, a little bit bigger than that pretty close to it 10 inch arrow port in the back tuned in the dirt right 18 hertz we're gonna be flexing the doors off this truck big massive front port just to give us some room to play um and i don't know like i said i uh i'm no expert at this this is the first one that i've ever done but based on the research that i've done this is what I've come up to. This is this is what I've come up with. So I hope this video helps you guys. Um, I'm just taking you guys on this journey with me, right? Um, and that's really all this is. So uh, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope this video helps you out and inspires you to try something new. Uh, you're never really going to learn anything unless you try it yourself. Uh, so anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Wanna hear it out your mouth, yeah. Give me fuel, it's a tool that I use to go ahead and run my mouth, yeah. I take shots, I take loss, I make shots, I miss lots. I tell you get big boss, you get yachts, you swing lots, and pop off a big shot. I ain't done chasing, got big dreams, bigger things, impatient. Who's at the top?